so dark. It's so dark. Where are we going? Going on a road trip Woo! to Winter Garden. Yeah. In the winter. It is 5.57 a.m. Let's get this party started. For this first episode, we went down to Winter Garden, Florida, just a short six hour drive from home. So naturally, we had a pretty epic road trip. That was not our best Cracker Barrel experience. No. It was very busy. Um, this is the worst Cracker Barrel because it's flip-flopped. I've been to 60,000 million Cracker Barrels and none of them are flip-flopped. It causes me immense distress every time we come here. Just saying. And when we were driving in on this very road right here. On the highway. Right there. Right over there. Mom um, saw a man pull out a gun in his car. <laughs> so hello. Welcome to Tallahassee. Way down upon the Swanee River. Struggle bus? Well, I thought this was the one that was the other zip code, but it's not. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> wow. It's too scared to even focus on me. I get that. car show or there is a car show and they started blocking off the road and then we had to park in public parking and so you had to be out by 11 p.m. but obviously we're not gonna move by 11 p.m. and so we have to take all of our bags because you know we have 60 million bags and walk them down the street to get to the hotel from the public parking then we get in and there's nobody at the front desk when we arrived in Winter Garden, I wasn't expecting a car show, but here we are. There were hundreds of cars and people filling the streets. It was wild. We were super excited to stay at the oldest hotel in Winter Garden, which is the historic Edgewater Hotel. It's right in the heart of downtown, and when you walk in, it's like stepping into a movie. The first thing I said was, are we in Agent Carter right now? Darling, you have no idea. The hotel originally opened in 1927, and with the exception of some modern amenities like air conditioning, heating, and Wi-Fi, it's still offering an authentic 1920s style hotel experience. You can see that history in the antique sinks and room fixtures and the original 1926 Otis elevator, which was pretty stinking cool. This is a traditional bed and breakfast with various food options to start your morning and a bunch of snacks to pick over 24 seven, including the candy and mints that are literally everywhere in the hotel and a pair of birds that were very entertaining for Joni and I. The ground floor of the hotel has a crazy cool lobby and two restaurants, an ice cream store and barbershop, 
We didn't go to the restaurants, but we did go to the ice cream store and it was delicious. Our first night in Winter Garden was spent at the Big Easy, where we ate way, way, way too much food and couldn't eat until dinner the next day. Morgan and his wife Misty are the owners of this authentic New Orleans style restaurant and they spoiled us with some delicious food. But don't take voiceover Jenny's word for it, just watch us eat it and sorry if you're jealous. Okay, so we thought they were picking just something random for us, but we got menus, so. That's pretty legit, if you ask me. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of choices here. Oh, lots of choices. Lots of choices. A few moments later. We're not getting any salads. We can just <laughs> cut that off the list right now. That's good. That's good tea, so. 10 out of 10 already for the tea. So what Joni B ordered is the Bootin Balls pork, rice, onions, and a whole lot of seasoning rolled in a ball and fried into a golden brown and served with our homemade remoulade. Sounds good, huh? Sounds delicious. I went ahead and decided after uh, months of deliberation to do an authentic Cajun food where we make our roux from scratch, you know, the gumbos, the etouffees, and all that kind of good stuff, and just make sure that, you know, it's the real deal. Because again, I've tasted a lot in Central Florida, and I just wanted to have a place that people knew from New Orleans could come and have the real stuff. Dear Lord Jesus, bless this food, bless this establishment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's do it. Let's try it. We got a little sauce, so I feel like I should Maybe. Oh, it smells good. It's hot. It's burning my fingers. Oh gosh, it smells really good. I need a fork to burn my fingies. Oh, I'm gonna get a little shot for you. Mmm. Mmm. Is that tasty? Mmm. -hmm. Get a little sauce on my fork. Like that. She's being, being dainty. And I mean, man, I it's too hot. Oh, good. Oh. Just so you can have samples. Oh my gosh. It's a gumbo and crawfish chowder. My, my wife's recipe, my recipe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I, I was surprised that y'all ordered food and balls. That's good. Still oh, you know it. Dance. They're good. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm going in for the gumbo. Get a little bit of sausage in there. Oh. And a little bit of rice. Oh man. Mm. Oh man, this is creamy. I would like to say, because we're liking everything so far, I want to say that we are going to be honest. We're not going to lead you astray, viewers, please know that. I'm kind of jealous that she's still, she's going to eat the chowder. Here we go. Oh mm, my god. That's good. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's so smooth. And just that little hint of the seafood taste. See? Yeah, bucket of that place. <laughs> Out of the two, the chowder, A plus. I mean, that's good, but this is good. I mean, that. That's some slap your mama good. I'm gonna keep eating it so she doesn't get any more. This is really good. I can taste the andouille in here, but it's not overpowering. And this is the same way. It's not super seafoody, which is kind of gross sometimes, you know? I mean, you taste it, but it's just so subtle and so smooth on your tongue, going down the throat. It's a winner. So how did you meet this Cajun guy? Well, actually, he hired me for my first waitress job at 21. He was uh, working in my hometown. Wow. We've been together ever since. Wonderful. Boy, he's yeah. just a southern gentleman. I mean, no, I'm yeah. very blessed. Are you? Oh, wow. And so now are you in the kitchen? Or are you on the floor? Or? Tonight I'm helping wait tables. Normally I'm in the kitchen cooking, and then we have another restaurant across the street, so I, I oh, do that. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Yeah, it's a little crazy. We used to have where I had a soup of the day that changed all the time. 
until all I got was complaints. Can we just have chowder today? Can we have chowder today? So that's all I do now there. is chowder. And now how long have you guys been open here? Eight years. Eight years. Wow. Morgan, he could eat jambalaya and potato salad and gumbo every day. Every day. That's cool. Yeah. He brings it home. Yeah. He loves it. He just don't get tired of it for me. Want a variety. That hence why you have the Mexican restaurant. Exactly. You can really see that that roux right there. That's a beautiful color. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's really good. She ain't having none. Okay, we're going in for the etouffee here. Nice, healthy bite. The Cajuns have the dark roux, and then the, the Creole has more of a red sauce, and it has a little more kick because there's a little more cayenne that comes out in that uh, in that Creole. But most everything that Creole people cook, a lot of times it's got tomatoes and stuff in it. So a lot of times when people say, hey, what's the difference between Cajun and Creole? The Creole is tomato-based, where the Cajun is more of a dark, slow-cooked roux. So that's it. That's your lesson. <laughs> nice big bite there. I'm glad we didn't eat much today. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a bite with the sausage in it. That's good. <laughs> okay, you need to go ahead and try your pasta. I gotta spit that out of my mouth because I'm so excited. That's beautiful. I don't even know what to do with myself. The presentation is gorgeous. If you've never had crawfish, what are you doing with your life? Get some. It is good. It's not as like seafoody tasting as shrimp to me. It's got a nice mild meaty flavor. It's really good. They call them the, the little mud bugs. Which does not sound appetizing, I realize. Look at them noodles. Ooh. Look at the noodles. They are. I can't wait to see how you like those noodles. I'm a pasta connoisseur, don't mess with me. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. What I think is so cool is how everything is even presented. And how it's different. Like, the... The crawfish in the etouffee tastes completely different than the crawfish in this pasta. The andouille sausage in this pasta tastes completely different from the sausage that's in the jambalaya and it was in the gumbo from earlier. They have fully transformed these ingredients. It's amazing. So it's not like, oh man, I already ate this. I don't want to eat anymore. It's like, what is this? I've never had this before in my life. <laughs> but I think I need to have it again. And again. This pasta is delicious. The noodles are cooked to perfection. A little bit al dente, but perfect. Nice Cajun Alfredo-y sauce. It a, has a little hint of spice to it with that the perfectly cooked crawfish and andouille sausage on there and some mushrooms, Ooh. which has a nice freshness to it. It's really good. I would drive five hours for this. I really would. This is the best <laughs> Cajun food I've had outside of New Orleans. Hands down. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's I really might even like it better than some of the food I've had in New Orleans. <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, you really have to make love to a lot of the roux. All right, it's just, it's just not going to work. Um, so now we're waiting on beignets because, you know, we're not full enough. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever consumed this much food in one sitting. Which I know must be hard to believe, but I don't think I have. Oh my goodness. Elvis, for the way you look at me. <laughs> so which one are we going for first? Oh my gosh. I don't know. You gonna survive? Are you okay? <laughs> going for Bavarian first? I don't take Alcasa. <laughs> oh. Cheers. Cheers. Bing. Yeah.
You know, I like that little bit of crispy on the outside. I do. They're different than any other beignet I've ever had. Yeah. And the other ones are just usually little fluffy clouds. Check the description box for a link to their website and Facebook page and get your butt down to the Big Easy in Winter Garden. You will not regret it. The main reason we chose Winter Garden for this episode was for the Garden Theater, and it did not disappoint. You have to understand, Joni and I have been to a ton of theaters all across the country, but this has to be the most sophisticated yet quaint theater we've ever been in, and the house was packed for The Legend of Georgia McBride. Hi, so uh, we're at the Garden Theater now for part two of our Winter Garden trip with Joni and Jenny V, and we're just kind of showing you where our seats are. I guess they're kind of zero okay seats, I guess. That's the stage. <laughs> what? What? Are you kidding me? So we are seeing the Legend of Georgia McBride. This is the Central Florida premiere, which is pretty cool. And we have vouchers for popcorn and for free drink, non-alcoholic of course. And we'll get that intermission. Awesome. Yeah, we're so excited. The theater is absolutely so cute. Adorable. Yes. And they say it's a sold out, so that's amazing for the theater group here. So, are you ready? I'm ready. We can't film during the performance, obviously, but I do have some clips I can insert for you. I'll insert those now, and we'll talk to you at intermission. Bye! Okay. Brad, I can make a soup purse out of this. Honestly, all I can say is wow. Joni B and I both left feeling inspired and ready to become queens in our own everyday lives. How's that? What? Not expected ending! Awesome! Nice meeting you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna get mic'd up and we're gonna go backstage. Oh my God. <laughs> the actors were amazing, the set design was incredible, and it was like we were at a Broadway performance, and I would not be surprised if some of these incredible actors made it to Broadway very soon. Two of those incredible actors actually took us behind the scenes and gave us a tour of the backstage portion of The Legend of Georgia McBride, so let's roll with those cool clips. So this is stage left. Got it. Who, whose costumes? Yours and? Uh, it's a mixture yeah. of a lot, okay, but it's okay. mostly Tracy and Rexy, myself. <laughs> um, it's just all sorts of sequin, lots of glitter. Yeah, we always uh, have like an extra something just in case. A lot of this is for dressing the stage. Yes. That's cool. These are our wigs. Mm -hmm. And because there's so many quick changes in this so show, every this is duplicated on the other side. So yeah. <laughs> these glamorous outfits. So like this is just a changing a, spot. A ton over there. <gasps> Absolutely. And this is a changing spot. Yep. That is Let's see, we have wigs like have wigs over everywhere. Here. <laughs> my uh, my friends came and saw the show last night and we, we were talking about it back home and they were like, yeah, I, who's the other guy? He didn't come on for a bow. I was like, no, that, that was Rexy. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, same person. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. And I and that's the cool thing, too. It's like with this show, like I said, with um, things are not as always mm -hmm. as they seem. You know, Jason is this open-minded man from the panhandle of Florida who, you know what I mean? Like, it's very easy for stereotypes or whatever, but he's such a cool Person. Yeah. So, and then I get to I go. I you get to drink. I sure do. It's <laughs> water. Amazing seltzer water. Oh. Uh, really empty calories. Uh, no, just kidding. There's zero, zero, zero calories. Oh, we gotta get. Gotta, I gotta keep this figure. I secretly am like, can I crawl on them? They're like, don't crawl. On them. <laughs> <laughs> they spend a lot of money for us to make sure we are looking mm -hmm. like drag queens. I mean, Simon, who plays Tracy, uh, he just finished his. Uh, contouring sticks today <laughs> and we're like oh, oh we've got a couple more shows <laughs> he was like i have to go get more 407 <laughs> which is his makeup number yeah. oh so he, he was kind of adorable 
And he's a heterosexual man, so it's very funny uh, <laughs> it's, yes. to hear him. Um, <laughs> That's why it's funny. Because yeah. he, cause he has no he's idea married, about being gay, but now he does. And it's just, he's so like. So, what does his wife think about his. She she's loves obsessed with it. She's obsessed. She came <laughs> She loves night. RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. So, she's very proud of her husband for like getting up there. Oh, yeah. Except for, she did tell me the other night, she was like, he was complaining about wearing heels. <laughs> she's like, they're one and a half inches. <laughs> And I'm so over here funny. like, can I please put more? Can I get a right. higher heel? That was the Five funniest inches, thing. Five inches, baby. That, or, that was another thing too. That how quickly you guys. And I'm like, oh yeah. No, I could do that. Well, we were waiting backstage for you. I have already fallen once. <gasps> oh! So yeah, her her micro. She dropped part of the thing. Slipped right down. <laughs> so how was it for you guys? I mean, you or? Oh my god. It's a blast. It's this so is probably fun. the most uh, craziest show we've done backstage. Yeah, it's been a lot fun. of. I've never had to put on a bra before for some reason. Yeah, so <laughs> he learned. It took took me a while. Like I don't know how to do this catch. Somebody's gonna have to show me how to do this. Because <laughs> I've got like 20 seconds. So <laughs> thank you yes. for letting us come. See, well, thank you for coming oh and enjoying it. This town is so adorable and homey. We had the best time walking around, going into some of the shops, eating amazing food, experiencing the garden theater, and the true history of Winter Garden. I'd say it was a pretty great first episode of Trippin'. On episode two, we are taking you all the way to Greenville, South Carolina, so stay tuned for that episode coming next month. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and check out all of the amazing places featured in this episode. All of their links will be in the description box below. Thanks for going Trippin' with us. Now it's time to head back to Fort Walton for our next hometown adventure. As always, for Joni V and myself, make sure y'all stay positive. So University of Florida, sorry, we're breaking your laws. I told University of Florida I was sorry that we decided to break their laws. We don't go here. Do not go here. Hello, Trippin' fans. Just want to let you know that Family Dollar number 53461 almost killed us on Interstate 10. He, we were literally by him and we could see his rearview mirror so he could see us too. And he about came over on top of us. So thank you Family Dollar 53461 for not killing us. Cause I've been bad for you. Okay, that's been a PSA, goodbye. <laughs>